What we're seeing here is an early morning fog in Aruku Valley. There are no filters applied here. What you're seeing is absolutely unfiltered and the sky is literally blue. This is blue fog. And the reason for this blue fog is all the water vapor or the molecules of water and the dust which are also included are absorbing all the other wavelengths of light. We know white light is split up into seven colors. The rainbow colors, the WIPGR. So all the other colors are being absorbed by the particles and by the dust. All these are called aerosols. Aerosols in the air stay afloat for hours or sometimes for days depending on the size of the aerosol. Fog forms when the difference between the air temperature and the dew point is less than 2.5 degrees Celsius. Fog can form in a number of ways. Radiation fog, ground fog, advection fog. What we're seeing here is radiation fog. Water vapor normally begins to condense on condensation nuclei such as dust, ice and salt in other forms of clouds, which tends to form when a cool, stable air mass is trapped underneath a warm air mass. Our air is like a magical blanket with nitrogen and oxygen and other gases and along with it, it has water vapor. Water vapor plays a very important role and the size of the particles of water also play a very important role. Water absorbs long wavelengths of light like red. So red and other colors are absorbed and the sea water appears blue. But why does pure water in a glass still appear colorless? Question mark, question mark. When excess amounts of water are put together and the impurities along with it, then we see this phenomena of Tyndall scattering. Here we see in this river, the color of the water is mostly brown and shades of brown. The color of the water depends on the state of the water whether the water is in its gaseous state like water vapor or it's in the liquid state or in the solid state and the impurities in the water and uh, whatever energies the water is carrying you can see clearly as i have slowed down the video you can see how the particles in the air the water vapor and the dust together are being moved around by wind Water vapor absorbs light at various wavelengths due to its molecular structure and the types of transitions that can occur within the molecule. Number one is rotational transitions. These occur in the microwave and far infrared regions. Water vapor molecules can rotate and these rotational transitions absorb energy at specific wavelengths. Number two is vibrational transitions. These occur in the mid-infrared and near-infrared regions. The water molecule can vibrate in different ways, such as stretching and bending of the bonds between hydrogen and oxygen atoms. And the third is electronic transitions. These occur in the ultraviolet region and involve the promotion of electrons to higher energy levels. The absorption of infrared light by water vapor is significant because it contributes to the greenhouse effect trapping heat in the Earth's atmosphere. Understanding water vapor absorption is crucial for climate models and predicting weather patterns. Satellites use this knowledge to measure humidity and other atmospheric properties. Isn't it intriguing how the properties of water vapor play such a vital role in our atmosphere and climate? White light is split up into different colors and each color has a different wavelength, red being the longest of the wavelengths and violet being the smallest of the wavelengths and water is very good at absorbing longer wavelengths. Water in the gaseous state absorbs the most amount of long wavelengths and this is why the blue fog optical phenomena is being caused. No guys, that's not a UFO, that's not an identified 
traveling light uh, it's just an auto oh we are having such fun we even uh, recreated a scene from a zombie movie the the atmosphere of this place early in the morning was really eerie What we're looking at today is a blue fog. This is how the blue fog is formed as we are watching it today. What we're looking here is a blue fog.